G'day guys, now, just a warning, if you are a little old Italian lady who likes gnocchi made out perfectly into these nice perfectly formed little balls, then this is not the right video for you. But, if you like gnocchi that's quick, easy, it can be thrown in the freezer and pulled out at a moment's notice, then this one is perfect, so keep tuned. Now, this one is a recipe that I have been making at work for a while now, and I do it for about 240 people at once. So it's one that I need to be able to put out really easily, really quickly, and more importantly, it has to be very tasty. But I found this one ticks every single box, and it's really quite simple. Okay, so first thing we're starting off with is lamb. So it doesn't technically need to be lamb for this one, but I find this recipe just, it brings out the best in everything. So I've got four quarter chops here, which are a relatively cheap cut of lamb because it can get a little bit pricey, especially in Australia, but this cut is perfect. It cooks down so soft and it just melts in your mouth. So I'm gonna cut all the bones out of these ones and dice it up into very small little chunks. Okay, so that is my lamb all triped, diced up and ready to go. And these are my leftover bones which will go to the pooch tomorrow for breakfast, which he will like. You just have one now. Another one. The next thing, we have a few onions. Okay, so these ones get a very quick dice. Okay, so I'm gonna go whack all this straight to the stove. Okay, so we have a hot pan and first in goes our brown these off a little bit. Okay, and to that we have some garlic cloves. Now I have some basil, so I'll give that a quick chop. So I'll add about half this and leave the rest for later. Okay, while that's cooking off, we're going to go collect some tomatoes from the garden. So there's nothing like fresh tomatoes. So, come on, mate. Say hello to the fishies. They're the ones giving me all the tomatoes. And let's pick some fresh ones. Okay, so that should be more than enough tomatoes. But yeah, I'm straight out of the garden, which is perfect. Okay, and this one has browned up perfectly. So we are going to chuck in our lamb. And we'll get that cooking down while we go for the tomatoes. Okay, while well, that lamb's cooking, I'm just going to give these a nice chop up. Just chop out the balls. Now it doesn't need to be particularly fancy, just dice it all up. It's got a couple of hours worth of cooking, so anything that's full in there won't be there anymore once it's done. Okay, so these are all going to go in there with that. And it's all going to cook down for a couple of hours, which would make it fantastic. And I have my leftover tomatoes, they can go in there. The next bit is the actual lazy gnocchi itself. And this is really a really simple recipe to do and doesn't require very much. So I like to do probably a little bit more potato to sweet potato because it just doesn't get firm enough to sweet potato by itself. But it's one of those fantastic ones you can whack in the freezer and pull out at a moment's notice. Put a, boiler, put a pot of boiling water on and this cooks from frozen fantastically. And it's one of the staples you can have in your freezer that a lot of people just don't have. But it's pretty simple. Helps to do it the right way. Okay, so these go into slightly diced, but it doesn't really matter how diced. Back them on and we let the two of these boil down. So the one thing to note with this one is you don't want to have 
uh, any sort of casserole boiling too hard. The harder it boils and the tougher the meat is going to get. So if it's got a very light simmering boil, then it will come out perfectly. If you have it boiling like crazy the whole time, it won't cook any faster and it won't come out as well. So I'm going to turn this down to a low temperature and just let this one boil very slowly. Potatoes, however, we shall boil the crap off till we can stick a knife through them and they come out clean. Okay, as you guys can see, the spoon is going straight through the potatoes. So they are pretty much done. And my other mixture here has cooked down beautifully. I'm gonna need to thicken it up a little bit with a little bit of tomato paste, but that is about it. And I have some balsamic vinegar. This just helps bring out the richness and everything in the flavor. You don't wanna put too much of it in there, but just enough that it just brings it out and enhances all the flavors. And it is just awesome. Now, one thing that's really hard to convey inside of a video is the usefulness of tasting something when you actually make it. It really makes all the difference. And what I'm doing here is tasting the tartness, the salt, the pepper, seeing how much sugar, salt, pepper I need to add to it to make the ingredients pop and make it absolutely perfect. So it's tasting and trying and tasting and trying until you get it absolutely perfect. And it's one thing I recommend above everything else I'm trying and getting right when you cook. Right, so this is my little mixer. And when we do it, we're going to use the K-hook. I'm not sure if it's got a better name than that, but that's what I've always called it. So that goes into there. I have my drained potato mixture straight in. Let me drop it and then Rips the crap out of it. Okay. And I have some parmesan. And some plain flour. Now this is the bit, the bit that's going to be tricky for some people because I don't have perfect measurements for it. I've always just done it by eye. And you want to have enough flour in there that it binds it all together, stops it from sticking, and enough to bind it when it's in there. So I usually go by texture and then go from there. Okay, so the texture you sort of want, you want it to be a little bit sticky, but not too sticky. Now it just needs slightly, slightly more. And don't forget the salt and pepper into this mix. Again, just a taste. So chill, it's not salty, but it's just perfect. And that is my sweet potato, that is my sweet potato gnocchi dough. Now we just need to roll it out into little strips and get ready to cook it. So, I have my nice dough. A bit of flour on the bench, and then floured hands. We tip all my mixture straight out on the bench. And then more flour over the top. And then it's just a matter of cutting them into little portions. A little bit more flour over the top of them, stop them all sticking together. And that is the gnocchi. So just continue it for the rest of it and I'll get a little tray ready. Now this mix is gonna go into the freezer until we actually need it. And I find the best way is a little bit of baking paper on the bottom, stops from sticking quite horribly, and then drizzle it over. So I'll drop the rest of it and then whack it all in the freezer and start freezing it down until right before we need it. One important thing to note is you want to make sure that if you're not using this straight away, it goes straight into the freezer because the moisture will come out of the potatoes and that sort of mix and they'll turn into a big gluggy mess. But if you guys are ready to cook for them, you can go straight away. Otherwise, just whack them in the freezer until you need them. You don't need to cover it. You don't need to do anything else. Just straight in the freezer and they will go straight into the water after that and be perfect. So I'm going to whack these in the freezer until I need them and then put them straight in the fridge in the thing. 
Okay, so this has had a little bit of time to solidify it in the freezer and I'm just gonna start dropping it in. This stuff really doesn't take very long at all. It's just a matter of once it floats, it is done. And I'm doing up enough, bad enough for four people, and this is probably overkill. And then the rest of this is gonna go inside the freezer. So I'll let it solidify completely and then just whack it inside of a airtight container and you can leave it in there for about six months. And then it only takes about two, three minutes inside the water to bring, all, bring it back to life. So it's really not very long at all. And it works fantastically. So we'll let that boil and flip to the top. Okay, so that has all started to float and that's when you know it is done. So I'm gonna strain that off and then whack it into a bowl. Very last minute, I have some basil that I haven't put through for it yet. And that goes straight in there. Turn it off. Very quick stir. And then that is done. Put the ragu over the top. Good to go. Hey guys, so this is my balsamic sweet potato balsamic lamb ragu. It's not hot, but very tasty. Very tasty. Yeah, so I hope you guys got something out of this and enjoyed the video. Now I'm gonna take this out of the back and start munching into it because it's freaking tasty. So um, I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you got something out of it. Thanks, guys.